Time to build an engine. gonna be a loud one. I've got both the air conditioner and the big fan going. It's about 104 degrees in here right now. It's 100 outside and then this thing's just a an oven in here. So uh, I've, I've got both big things going. It'll be loud. Sorry. Most of this episode was filmed in mid-September. Took me a while to get it out because there's been some big changes in the DFHS HQ. Anyway, I'll probably be doing a lot of voiceovers so I can uh, avoid polluting your ears with the background noise. Yeah, all right, I've got all my, all my parts, treats came in, so I've got all the bearings and seals that I'm gonna need. So uh, I'm just gonna get as far as I can on this tonight. It's pretty late, so it's not gonna be too far, but if I can get the, the bearings and the seals in, I'll, I'll consider myself uh, happy. Yeah, I might wait to put the seals in until after I put it back together, I'm not sure. But the bearings are going in now. I'm going to get the uh, toaster oven out. Do it right. There are four snap rings that hold the bearings in place. Uh, just like the bearings, three of them are the same, one of them is different. Make sure you get the right ones in the right spots. Here we go. I'm gonna freeze these guys with some air duster. This first one was a little ornery. The rest of them go in a lot easier. I always give it a final hit with a socket that's the same size as the outer race, just to make sure it's fully seated. Then it's just rinse and repeat with the other case, uh, put in the snap rings, heat it up, freeze the bearings, smack them in. Just that easy. Done and done. One of the best things about filming YouTube videos is you get to go back and watch what you did when you pulled it apart. While I'm lubricating, everything on the gearbox side gets non-detergent, regular 10W30 oil, and everything on the crankcase side gets two cycles. first the short side in get that little ring gear so it's locked by the casting in the case then I put in this other unit as a whole and just slid it on and a tappy tap tap to put it into place now I gotta flip it over and put that other gear on Without losing all this crap, I know I'm going to lose this. I'm just going to take it off. Right there. This should stay in. And now on the other side, first a spline washer, then the gear, then another spline washer, then the little split washer, then screw it together. Rat a tat tat. Then make sure it spins nice and free. And move on to the next thing. I'm going to put the seal in, the crankcase seal now. That's two cycle oil. Just 
Just nice little light taps. Mini light taps is how I do seals. Till it fully seats. Now it's time to put the crank in. Tapered side goes down on this case. This should go in pretty easily. You don't want to force it too much. And give it a couple little love taps. Tink, 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 tink. Oh yeah, nice and pretty. All right, now it's time for this little spline rod. Uh, it goes in the, in the needle bearing. Moved back to the non-detergent oil for lubricating this up. It's got a little washer that goes on the end before you insert it into the needle bearing. It just slides right in, make sure it spins. All right, I think this half is done. And I think that's it for the inside stuff. All right, here's the last little chance to put some lubrication in before closing up the cases. Get the gasket and make sure it fits on there correctly. Now I'm putting oil on the gasket. Don't ask me why, I don't know why. I just do it. And I'm gonna insert the other crank uh, seal. Tippity tippity tap. One more little lube job. Then uh, I'm applying Honda Bond to all of the mating surfaces. Just the tiniest bit to get the gasket to sit and to keep a flexible um, little bond there so the gasket can do its job better for longer. Do it on both sides. I don't want this stuff squeezing out too much, so I'm putting very little amounts on there. But it does make putting the gasket on easier because it kind of sits where you put it. And then it's time to close her up. Try not to push too hard here. Just make it find its spot and then push it in. Couple little taps just to make sure she's fully seated. And then I'll uh, I'll go around with the rag and clean up any of the Honda Bond that might have squeezed out. Hopefully it's not very much. All right, I'm not torquing these or even putting Loctite on them yet. I'm just getting them in and then we'll come back through and torque them all down. At the same time we're torquing them, we'll put, uh, we'll put some uh, Loctite on them as well. First time through, just kind of getting them, not even tightening them in at all. I'm just getting them in there, getting them threaded, and then we'll come back through and tighten them. I went to about, I would say, six different stores to get all of the correct lengths and sizes of hardware that I'll need for this Gorelli. Uh, there's no set, so you just got to do the legwork and go find it if you're replacing it. I probably could have used the old stuff, but I always like having the peace of mind that there's brand new screws and hardware and everything. And the gasket comes connected across the crank, so you have to, uh, you have to cut that out. All right, I've got, um, I got the torque specs. It's seven foot pounds, so that's 84 inch pounds. I'm gonna do it first to 40, and then I'll come back and do it to 84. All right, and now when I go around, I'm gonna do it to 84, and I'll put a little Loctite on them. So I pull, pull it all the way out, just one at a time. Correctly torqued. 
I like marking them. It makes me feel like an airline mechanic. You'll notice that I'm tightening these things in kind of a star pattern so it evenly distributes the force across the cases. And then at the end, I go through and I wipe any of the Honda Bond that might have squeezed out. Woohoo! All right, then, that is a put together engine. All right, now it's time for the transmission, which is the most challenging part of this build. Uh, the Woodruff key had a bunch of marks on it, so I'm just using a stone to scrape it down and make it smooth so it fits in the uh, slot better. All right, so first the little washer goes on, and then the big flat washer. This is the most complicated part of the build. Um, so I'm spending extra time here. I'd also like to point out that I did it entirely incorrectly. But you put the Woodruff key in, and then this little thingy dingy slots on top and locks into the Woodruff key. There we go. Then I put these little tiny springs in. These plates. This has got to go on so those things can grip it. So it's got to go on that way. Okay, now a little tutorial on how this works and why I did it incorrectly. You'll see this, uh, this piece here has the, you can see where it slots into the Woodruff key. And then you see these slots where those plates and springs fit on the outside. And you'll notice they're directional. They have a round side on one side and a flat side on the other. And so do the plates. So they can get kind of captured in there. And then the springs push them out. Well, what that means is, is when the gear goes on, you'll see in the gear has some flat sides that can grab those plates. So when it spins in one way, it freewheels. And when it spins in the other way, it grabs the gear and it turns. So it matters the direction you put that centerpiece in. If you look at the way I did it, you will see that it freewheels when spinning clockwise. That is incorrect. You want that thing freewheeling when it spins counterclockwise. What happens when you put it in upside down? Well, you'll find out in a later episode, but it's not good. There is probably some special tool you can use for this, but you have to compress those springs. The way I figured it out was taking some Teflon tape, wrapping it around, getting the gear on there, and then pulling the Teflon tape out and sliding the gear down. That worked for me, and I've done it now about three times, so, uh, <laughs> so I'm becoming an expert. I mean, you can see I'm fr freewheeling the wrong way. Dang it. Oh, I wish I could go back and do that again. Anyway, lube it up, put the other flat washer on, and then you can put the other gear on. Push it in so it's fully seated. And then you can put the other washer, and then finally the nut. Make sure you rat-a-tat it right and tighten it down real good here, because after you get the clutches on, you're not going to be able to get a socket on there. I got new clutches, new clutch rubbers. Nice. All right, take this old one off. This is in pretty good shape, but I'm in here, so I'm gonna replace it. All right, so at this point, my memory card filled up and uh, I missed some of the action. The only thing you missed was me putting the other clutch rubber on the other clutch, which you see in the background there, and then putting a little tiny uh, washer down over top of the shaft where the clutches go. So now you just slide the one clutch over, get it down there good. 
there's this little spline washer here, which is a tight fit. I've had to hammer it on, and then I have to get a puller on there when I want to get it off. But uh, that's a tight fit. And then you can put the little clutch inside. And then there's these little springs that go in, five of them. And then the friction plate goes on top of those. And then the clutch bell. And a washer. And the nut. And then a little rat a tat tat. This might be the bitch of the bunch. There's these four little rubber pips that hold this pressure plate on. Oh, how do you do that? I don't know. You gotta think about that. I have no idea how these things are gonna come through here. Here's 10 minutes of me trying to get those stupid rubber things through the, the holes. Uh, I did finally get them. Chunked them up good too while doing it. Uh, later I go ahead and I replace these with metal rivets. Uh, I think that's what I would be doing from the start if I could do it over again. Got it. All right, we're in the home stretch. Just putting some Honda Bond on for the uh, tranny gasket. Uh, go ahead and stick her on and torque her down. Seven foot pounds again. Uh, lock tight the whole rigmarole. <laughs> Lastly, I'll install the ignition cover. Uh, this is just for looks at this point, since uh, I haven't actually installed the ignition. That'll be coming in a later episode. But I just wanted it to get to a nice, complete look. So obviously this is a bottom end only rebuild uh, at this point. I've got big plans for the top end that you'll see in the next episode. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. See you in a bit.